Oh, this is Pastor Jones. Wanted to spend about five minutes with you today. A time ago, we, in our Bible study class, talked about Elisha at the end of his life. You, you know Elisha, the uh, protege, if you would, of Elijah, the man that was plowing with his oxen. Elijah came and put his mantle on him, and he immediately jumped up and went with the prophet and waited on him and was schooled by him. And then, of course, at the River Jordan, uh, we find that he was going to take Elisha's place, Elijah's place, rather. And at that time, he received a double portion of the Holy Spirit. And when you track Elisha's life compared to Elijah, he did twice as many miracles as did Elijah, that double portion of the Holy Spirit. But here's the thing I want to drive home to you this morning. In the second book of Kings, the 13th chapter, we see that Elisha is not very far from going home to be with God. He's going to die. Even though a double portion of the Holy Spirit resided on him, even though he did twice as many miracles as Elijah, Elijah was picked up with a, a chariot of fire, but Elisha is now, he's going to die. And when we look in on this 13th chapter, it's been 40 five years since he's done any real public ministry and that was the anointing of Jeru and we find here as we look at his life the Bible says in that 14 verse now Elisha had fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died the thing I want to strike home to you for a moment this morning is that every one of us are moving down that path in which we will be faced with eternity and when I look at Elisha here, I think of a man that was a great man of God. Do you know he was more feared than, the, than armies and kings at that moment in time? They feared him because God's presence was on him. He could see things. He could see them plotting. He could see their schemes. I wonder how many men of God walk the face of this earth today that are more feared than kings and armies in countries. You know what Elisha did? He was a man that as he was coming to the close of his life was going to impact Joash one more time and he would conclude his life by making this statement. He made his life count for God. Can I ask you something today have you made your life count for God all the riches and fortune and houses and cars and titles and applause it, it all goes away when you die there's one thing that does not go away and that is what you've done for the Lord and my question to you have you made your life count for God like this great prophet did one other thought when you read further in that chapter, the 21st verse, the Bible said, when the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. The point I make there is this, that God can make his servants a blessing to others even after their death. And of course, in this illustration, a man was quickly buried in this battlefield and his bones touched Elijah. His body touched Elijah. And he was revived and brought back alive. I wonder how many will impact after our death. After our departure from this world. Where the words that you spoke, the life that you lived, the example you gave. Will it be perpetuated in your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren? Let me leave you with this thought. All who come in contact with the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be made alive by the miraculous power of God. If that's not happened to you yet, will you reach out and touch the Lord today, and will you allow him to touch you? Because the same thing that happened to that dead man when he touched the bones of Elisha will happen to you when you allow the Lord Jesus Christ to touch you. You will come alive. I pray I've given you something to think about today. This is Pastor Jones saying God bless you till I see you again.